Hello, I'm Steve Davis and welcome to New Kids on the Bays, a brand new series bringing together the best under 16 year olds in the country, playing for a first prize of £1,000. You may well be seeing the future stars of the game here first on Wire TV. With me throughout the series is the current UK champion and also the latest new kid on the bays and the professional scene, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie, thank you. You're going to be playing these players in a one-frame match after they finish their match. What standard do you think we're going to be seeing from these unknown players? Obviously, it'll be a really high standard because they've had to uh, qualify to reach this stage. So, I mean, I'm expecting some, some really good like snooker from some of these players and uh, I know when I was 15 I was capable of uh, beating quite a lot of the professionals so a lot of these youngsters here today I mean uh, are capable of competing against any professional in the game I would accept maybe the, like the top 16 but anyone outside there I would imagine most of these can uh, beat any of them Okay let's look at the draw Paul Hunter plays Lee Spick in the first quarter final in the second quarter final Sean Murphy takes on James Reynolds in our third quarter final, Stephen Maguire plays Barry Hawkins and Locking Horns in our third, fourth quarter final, sorry, Jonathan Lewis takes on Robert Donkin. All these matches best of three frames and Ronnie O'Sullivan will be playing the winner. Our first match is between Paul Hunter and Lee Spick. Let's meet the players. I was about four years of age and my granddad just came up and he had a little table. I just asked him to play with me and that's how it got started. About five hours of practice a day Lineups, uh, long shots, practice and safety. Well, I got started at a club, which my dad's. Well, he's he's always been interested in snooker. Plus, he owns off on it. And now I'm about 12 and started. My favourite player is Steve Davis because he's so dedicated to his sport. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 years old from Leeds, Paul Hunter. And from Mansfield, 13-year-old Lee Spick. Lee Spick has won the toss and will break. So the first quarter final match begins and the two contestants shake hands. It's Lee Spick then to break. He's the younger of the two players, only just. Lee Spick, winner of the qualifiers held at Peterborough not too long ago. Something like a couple of weeks ago, Lee made it. And he is playing uh, one of the favorites, it has to be said, Paul Hunter, who's from Leeds. Paul Hunter, a junior international, and now, I'm told by his father, very proudly selected to play in the senior English team. Travelling over to Ireland in October to represent his country at the age of 15 years of age. It's the best of three frames for a place in the semi-final. So this young man, having seen him qualify at Peterborough, is uh, an out-and-out -out attacking player. I suppose uh, at this age, 14 years of age, Steve, Steve Davis, Six. you can't expect them to know everything about the game, and I would imagine the strategy will come second. Well, also, Mark, um, it would be perhaps wrong Seven. if at this age they were too cautious, because um, that comes with a bit of age and also a bit of experience. But the main thing is to get the Green balls ball. in the pockets. Here's a chance for the brown, but uh, Lee's playing the green, Lee's so fit. perhaps he does know a bit Seven. about the game. That's uh, Paul Hunter's father there. Very proud to tell me a few moments ago of uh, Paul's selection for the senior English team. And he's well, made a mistake there. Lee Spick. Snooker by the green ball by 
Lee Spick's previous visit to the table. He's, he's missed and uh, he's left Lee in with a wonderful chance. I think he can get on the black here. Quite capable of all of these players. Not on the black, what? no, but probably on the pink if he goes. All of these players capable of making a frame winning break. Whether they can do it under television lights, under a pressure they've probably never experienced before, remains to be seen. Yellow, Yellow ball. Mr. and Mrs. Lee Speck. Three. From Bansfield, they come from. Lee Speck, three. Now, caught that a little bit too thinly there, and he sent the white ball a little bit too hard and coming back up towards the reds off the ball cushion. Paul Hunter yet to settle down. Obviously, he feels he's the favourite playing the younger player, and um, probably feels a bit more of the pressure. One of the few times in his life as a teenager he will feel the pressure when you're playing a younger player. Just having a little walk around, like a seasoned professional, just to see uh, what he's going to do here. Looks as though he can't get at the red near the pocket because the brown's in the way. Doesn't, wa doesn't want to leave it on. So, in the early stages then of the first frame of this first quarter final in the Kids on the Bees Championship, it's uh, the younger player, Lee Spick, in the lead now by 15 points to nothing, and Paul Hunter yet to open his account. Like he's playing a safety shot on this red. Lee Spick, six. Dangerously close to the blue, but that's ended up in a very nice position. And still Paul Hunter, the more experienced favourite of the two players, yet to really get going. Yet to score and obviously uh, played at a higher standard in his short career. But it's who does it on the day. And he knows that as well as anybody. He's got to prove himself at every chance. So.
So, 20 points of difference then. The young man at the table, Paul Hunter, yet to score. But found the path there between the reds and the colours. Oh, just touched the yellow there. Well, it looked as though it would have made the ball cushion. Still not a bad shot. into going for the How? red, didn't fancy playing safe off the one near the cushion, Four hunter. knocked in a good red, oh. that's uh, unlucky to go in off, but may not have left too much on, except this, see it in a moment, this long red into this left corner pocket, well, just moved a little bit on the shot, still a little bit tense no doubt. When was the last, when was the first time Steve that you played on the television that you, you didn't actually start really getting into it seriously until you were 17. Is that right? One. No, I suppose my first competitive match on the television was against Tony Mir in the final of the Pontins Pro-Am. And I was about the uh, 18 mark, I think, when I played in that, 17, 18. Seems too long ago now to remember. Uh, certainly not Lee Spick's age. And to be playing the game to this standard Six. at 13 would have appeared unbelievable to me. I hadn't made a a hundred break until I was 17, so shows you how the standard improves all the time. Lee hasn't got into the balls to make a big enough break, but he's keeping Paul Hunter out. And as yet, Paul Hunter has only produced a few good safety shots and not got a red in the pocket. Correction there for Lee Spicks, actually 14. Give some wrong information. But he certainly seems to have the cool ahead at the moment. Not rushing, taking his time, but quite aggressive when he needs to be. He's got a difficult decision whether to cut this red in down by the bottom of your screens into the bottom left hand corner pocket. And he's deciding on quite an unusual safety shot here. What do you think of that one, Mark? I didn't think he'd choose that one, but he's played it well. And it's safe there. Both those shots were determined by the red, by the blue. And the fact that down a lot of the bottom part of the table, or the top as you look, that red is potable into the middle pocket. Uh, but of course, to play a safety shot down to the yellow part of the table would be quite safe. And I would imagine that Paul Hunter will be the first player to spot that. He may have a touching ball here, which would make it easy. Or he could try playing a safety shot off the red that's furthest to the right on our screens. But no player would is really gaining the advantage by this fairly negative type of safety shot but of course it's the first frame of a best of three match and both players want to get off to a great start so Paul Hunter uh, yet to open his account by way of the pot might have a chance here. 22 points behind. He's got four on the board from in off by Young One. Lee. And a little screw back there leaves him on the ping. Now, this is a crucial ball. He should knock this in, but still may not have settled. Right now, here's his chance. He's turning pro next year. And 16 on the 14th of October. Eight. Now a few easy pots. And that'll go a long way to settling him. Paul 
Ball has a nice cue action. Has a nice 13. smooth backswing, especially on the last pullback. And a nice definite hit with a good 40. solid follow through. Certainly seems to be the sounder of the two players. Made that particular shot a bit awkward. Wanted to be further away from the cushion onto this red. 90. Well, they played a very good shot there. It looks as though he's landed just the right side of that blue. And perhaps the left-hand yellow of the two near the black will go into that corner pocket. Well, it didn't. And uh, he's had a, a good result there, that little glance off that last row. And now in the lead. 26. 32. will probably be trying to keep on a ball into the opposite middle pocket. Referee just cleaning the white ball. Or has he put it in a safe position? No, he's played a safety shot himself. Slightly, but this is a, a very nice angle to continue the break. Three. And all of a sudden, the early part of this frame becomes unimportant as Paul makes quite a substantial break here. 39. Forty. 18 points in front. The black will make him 25. So he'll need just one of the last two reds together with a colour. Forty-seven. Twenty-five in front. That's a great shot. Super shot that. Could have missed it. Went in as clean as a whistle. In fact, he does need the last red. 26 points, the difference. And seven's 33. So this to win the first frame. And this is a great lesson to all the club players watching. 55. Notice how smoothly Paul brings the cue back 56. on the final backswing. One of the big problems that other players have is uh, the panic on the shot itself. And one of the ways that that can be negated is by a nice smooth pullback. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the controlled pullback here. That was even on a firm shot. 64. Great opening here for Paul Hunter. And Lee Spick must be wondering What's going on after a nice early start? Foul. Oh, there's the wrong ball's gone in here, but that was a terrific break there. Break of 64 by Paul Hunter. Frame the white find in the pocket in the end. Now, it looks as though Lee Spick has conceded the frame. He needed perhaps, uh, what, three snookers there. So, young Lee Spick, after the good start, comes up against Paul Hunter at his best and it's Paul Hunter then that leads by one frame to nothing in this best of three frame quarterfinal match.
Lee Spick recovered to take frame two, so it's one frame all as we rejoin Mark Wildman. So, welcome back to Thornbury for the third and deciding frame third of this frame. Kids on the Bay's first quarter final Respect match right. between, respectfully, the underdog 14 year old Lee Spick from Mansfield, who's played superbly to come from one frame down, now opening up in this deciding frame for place in the semis against uh, the favourite in this particular match and possibly for the tournament Paul Hunter who made a couple of 147s against professional opponents a full England international one and uh, a very very talented player indeed who is probably having some trouble now accepting the fact that uh, there's a possibility now of defeat in front of him Steve Davis pointed out earlier he's starting a match's favourite doesn't always help especially over a short frame distance. Yes, um, Paul Hunter trying a quite a, an aggressive safety shot there and catching the side of the reds. What he doesn't really want to do is to give Lee Spick many chances in this last frame. And he wants to try and contain him. Um, but that's quite a difficult thing to do in a short match. No real time to get a psychological edge get the upper hand but if you can play good safety shots like that keep your opponent out Lee Spick just tapping the table some of the big crowd here at Thornbury Leisure Centre to see this rather innovative YTV Kids on the Base Championship players under the age of or rather I should say players of 16 and under and these have certainly got to be the stars of the future mistake there from Lee Spick but it's not going to be so easy now that the blacks out of commission to make a break and I would say that probably favors Lee Spick more than it does Paul Hunter the pink is available although I think an early mistake in positional play there has One. meant that the break has come to a very premature end Blue ball. Steve on that shot just to the point Technically, he noticeably didn't seem to go through with his coup quite so far on that shot to get on the pink. Um, I think he, he was probably trying to force an angle from a fairly straight shot, and perhaps caught the shot a bit thicker than he, he wanted to, a bit straighter, which meant that the white ball didn't move over. And he didn't seem to get anything into the white ball, you're right. Um, but I should think he's a bit shocked after the second frame, to be quite honest. I think after what he did to Lee Spick in the, the, the first frame, he was expecting quite an easy ride. Well, I'm shocked and you're shocked. <laughs> the way he was knocking those balls in the young 14-year-old from Mansfield. Nothing seemed to frighten him at all. And I think that's his ace, actually. He's not frightened. He's not respecting Paul Hunter. I think it's the way Lee Spick plays. He certainly is a very natural-looking player. He's, he's an unnatural stylist, and therefore he has that will have that natural banner put round him and he certainly goes for them um, well they may not all come off but he's certainly entertaining to watch and I'm sure he's going to give as he grows up a lot of people watching him a lot of pleasure made a, a very bad error there but even so there isn't really uh, anything easy on here this red is an awkward shot to play he has the chance of a cutting a red into the corner pocket, but that's dangerous. The reds are nicely split open. And now the pink ball's into play. If the pink ball were to be potted, it does look like it would go on the black spot. And that would be a break builder's dream. Asking for the spider here from the referee. A little bit fortunate, really, Lee get away with that uh, last mistake like this this is tough and even harder mark to get position on the pink ball very awkward to keep the queuing straight using the spider and putting a lot of pace into the white ball to get it back down into a positional area a long way out with the pot 
Doesn't seem to have done much damage. But then look who's at the table. An aggressive shot, but making sure he's screwed back to the bottom part of the table. And that was a very, very controlled, smooth shot there from Paul Hunter. Showing One. a bit of experience. Gonna have to play this yellow with the rest. significant it wasn't an easy shot playing well, with the rest but well. if he had played safe it was almost a statement to say he wasn't too sure about the end result of the frame and I suppose he felt he had to take it on and rather snatched at it nothing in this frame and this is the first one reasonable scoring effort the first chance to build up a, a lead Plenty of body movement, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to Lee Spick. He's uh, a bit of a revelation, I'm sure, amongst the, the younger players in the game. Certainly an Alex Higgins-style player in many ways. Always had a result here because the pink goes on the black spot. Seven. Doesn't get bottled up by that red next to the pink spot. What a chance now. Eight. A 14-year-old Lee Spick from Mansfield. As long as he doesn't think about the finishing line and just concentrate on knocking the points together. Down at uh, Peterborough in the qualifiers, he had a couple of 50 breaks. Played exceptionally well at, and in this style as well. He was 15. just going for everything. That was a, a great shot he played there as well. Uh, dangerous chances of snookering himself on the red, but he knew exactly what he was doing with the spin on the white ball, clearing the path for the pink. And really doesn't... Uh, <laughs> really doesn't give the ball the chance to roll off. You get lots of club players moaning about tables rolling off. Well, if you don't want a ball to roll off, then make sure you hit it into the pocket one. positively. Little screw onto the red above the pink. Leaves him on the pink beautifully. 22. This will be a big shock, I think, for the tournament. One of the favourites, under a bit of pressure. Paul Hunter can't do anything at the moment. He's got to wait his chance. And four open reds. And the remaining four after that, should he knock them in? And that's asking a lot. But if he does knock them in, the four that are left aren't quite so easy for Paul Hunter to come back with. Well, I'm, I'm sure there were easier positional shots on the table, but I just think Lee Spick's revelling in this. He's enjoying himself. He's on television. There's a crowd watching. It's a fantastic table. He's really going for it. Oh, I don't believe he's going for that. And, and he's having a bit of a kind run, and let me say he deserves it because he's going for his shots. He's landed perfectly on this pink after knocking in that. Most difficult red into the middle pocket. He's only a few points from home now as so this break goes to 42. 42, let's see, a couple of maybe three loose reds and he could 42. win the frame by then. 43. Well, I'm sure at least Vic's father and mother will be letting him off his homework tomorrow if he gets through this first round. 49. It's called a final. He certainly deserves it. Uh, an amazing player, uh, as as amazing as Tony Drago, as amazing as Alex Higgins, and a breath of fresh air in a game that sometimes, for some people, can be a bit too mechanical. Right, so, oh, what's that kiss done to him? That's not worked out in his favour because he needs just one more red. There are four reds left on the table at the moment. 56. And uh, one more red required. I don't think this will be much of a problem, Mark, to be quite honest. Uh, he, he won't go for this. 
He's got to play safe. Yeah, he's, he's like they can't bear to away. watch. Look. Just can't believe he keeps going for these shots. I've told him on countless number of times, play a safety shot. He'll be playing safe here. He oh, knows. shaking his head there, and he's going to win. No, no, he's, he'll play safe here. He's going to go for this one along the top cushion. There's absolutely no way he's in. playing a safety shot. If he's even got the, if, if got the choice of a cut in the middle with the other red. Oh, he must have got a kick. He never misses those. <laughs> Fantastic break there from Lee Stick. I'll tell you what, that was so good. Pop, pop, pop from impossible positions. And it also leaves the deciding frame slightly open still. Still a slight chance for Lee Hunter. Four reds left on the table. A total of 53 points in it, and he's got a cracking sneaker. I beg your pardon, I mean Paul Hunter, of course. Well, regardless of the outcome of this match, I think you may well be seeing a bit more of Paul Hunter on the television in the future. He seems to have a very cool head on his shoulders and a very good cue action. Foul. The way where the balls, the way the balls are split up here, the colours in all good positions, the black off its spot. Certainly Lee Spick is now a strong favourite. But um, if Paul Hunter has anything about him, he won't panic. And he certainly gets a red off the cushion. There's no need for him to try and clear the balls in one go. It's not the best of safety shots, but he's still making Lee Spick work for his win. And this is going to be Paul Hunter's chance. Just the last clinching final part of the game. And Paul knows that he's got a produce something but not necessarily all in one go one yes and you can't write him off because it is in a, sta a situation where it looked as though he was dead and buried he now sees a glimmer of hope and this is when this is when the top players respond Seven. and this young lad I think he knows that he's not there yet not quite so sure Eight. As exciting a frame as you'd see in any professional match. He's trying to get around the back of that red, but he's left himself into the top corner pocket. Fourteen. Enough points on the table for Paul to win. Lee Spick having a count up on the board, trying to work out what he thinks Paul might be playing if he pots this red. He's deciding to go for it in the corner. No, he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's playing a safety shot, trying to get that ball nestled behind the green and the blue. Paul Hunter, 14. 35 points the difference. So one good pot, and here's a chance. Shot, shot to nothing. Taking the red into the corner quite a long way out. Making sure the white goes down. Just needs one red. That's Lee Spick. Bad safety shot there from Paul Hunter, and he was very lucky to get away with that. Hit that far too thick. Lee Spick completely missing the ball, trying to cut it. And nervous moments here for both players. Got a chance to cut that red into the middle pocket, but um, you wouldn't know where the white ball was going. No, and he's got to really go for, you know, he's getting onto a colour is not going to be easy. Just the pink, really, to play for. What a great shot this is. Fraction two shots. <laughs> but still keeping himself in the game, giving himself a chance. If you're in the game, you can still win it. A cameraman's nightmare, Lee Spick. Like he's going for this one. Good solid pot. <laughs> and deserves to be on the pink, whether he played it into the middle or to the corner. Not easy to get on the red. Very important, though, that he makes sure he gets this pink ball. He needs the points to keep in the game. And now he can play another safety shot. 28 points in it. Lee Spick, though. Seven. Nerves beginning to fry a little bit, no doubt. Just still needs one red. Four hunter. Seven. That's 
change things slightly. Let's put the yellow out of uh, commission as far as uh, a break building opportunity is concerned. And Lee Spick has, a, in some ways, a free chance at this red. He's not really going to do any damage if he misses it. Wow. I think that's going to be the one, Steve. He now yeah. needs a snooker, does the other, the other player, Paul Hunter. And I would imagine that this time he's going to surely try and snooker Paul, is Lee Spick. No, now. Lee Spick. <coughs> may just be able to tickle that Paul yellow. Just made sure. Lee Spick, 57. And Paul Hunter has to play a swerve here. Masse. Foul. Lee Spick. Um, Five. Slightly too hard. Not enough grip on the white ball there to curl the white ball round the brown. And five points is expensive. 34 points in the game now. Well, what a shaker of a result in the first of these matches. It's not over yet, Mark. No, I know, but those balls on the ball cushion there are going to be mighty difficult to lay snookers behind. It was unfortunate there for Paul Hunter. And you're right, his chance is slipping away. So how fickle is snooker then? Two. A week ago, Paul Hunter was told that he was going to be playing for the full England team in the international match against Ireland, aged 15 years of age. He must have felt Two. so happy then, looking forward to this Kids on the Bays quarterfinals onwards for her first prize of £1,000 and entering as one of the favourites to win, coming against the second youngest competitor, Lee Spick from Mansfield and finding himself now 36 points behind with only 25 points on the table. In goes the green, that's going to be the final nail on the coffin. And Lee Spick inside is going to be so happy and I'm sure his parents sitting in the auditorium are going to be just the same. Paul Hunter with a smile on his face, all to his credit, must be suddenly disappointed. Walks over and congratulates Lee Spick from Manfield who wins this quarter-final match by two frames to one. How did you feel after Paul put in that big break to win the first? Uh, a bit nervous, actually, at the beginning. But then you came out in the second frame, potted absolutely everything. We couldn't believe it. It was fantastic. How did you feel? Did you fancy the shots or did you think, I'll just go for it? I'll just go for it. Is that the way you play? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it's been very, very entertaining. Good luck in the rest of the tournament. And you now have a special bonus. Uh, you're going to be playing against one of the top new young players on the professional circuit. And a big round of applause to the UK champion, the reigning UK champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. So, Ronnie O'Sullivan then, slightly different opposition. An established professional, the reigning UK champion, and uh, surely destined for the top honours of the game one day. He's not so old himself. And Lee Spick, semi-finalist and winner over Paul Hunter in the first of the quarterfinals. Three years ago, Ronnie O'Sullivan could well have been in this particular tournament here. What? Talking to Ronnie before the start of this tournament. Eight. And he said he's going to take these games very seriously as match practice. And, um, no. Obviously these players are proficient enough that Ronnie wouldn't want to lose to any of them. And as they are new kids on the bays and they may be the future stars and champions of the game. It's Six as well eight. to put the boot in early. Seven, 
put them in their place. You've got to try and retain the packing order. I remember a few years ago, uh, you were in a similar situation when you went up to Scotland to take on young Stephen Hendry on a tour. That's right. Uh, these days, exhibition play is, can be as serious as, as actual match play. And the standards become so fierce that every match is a potential championship match. You never know who your next opponent's going to be. Yeah, what you're, what, what you're really saying is it's not impossible that uh, two or three years' time, maybe a bit longer in the case of Lee Spink, because only 14, he may be playing Lee Spink in a, a mighty important tournament. Oh, you didn't soften up on your tour with Stephen Hendry. I mean, Stephen won't mind me saying you absolutely knocked him all over the place, but 40. it wasn't too long before he was doing it back to you, was it? Well, that's right, and that's what's happening in snooker. The, uh, the younger players are growing up, becoming established at a much earlier age. A little while ago, you'd have never seen a player of Ronnie O'Sullivan's age producing the goods at the top level. And it just yeah. remains to be seen how young the top players can be. Ronnie O'Sullivan's really come off uh, superbly well here. He's currently on a one four seven. I think he's a bit short on that last shot. Fifty-six. Um, seems to be queuing very well, Ronnie. After Lee missed the first opening red. I think he snooked on the black here, Mark. But he will play. May, may well play the pink here. And he's on. He's on target for a one forty break if everything goes nicely for him. And um, well, what better way to put Lee Spick in his place than to do that? 63. 64. In goes. Lee Spick sitting there thinking, bring back Seven. Paul Hunter. Although Paul Hunter could have just as easily have done this. This is a superb break by Ronnie O'Sullivan. There's Paul Hunter, can't believe what's going on all of a sudden. A chance of a 140, a big 140 on here. And I'm sure Ronnie O'Sullivan will be going for as big a break as possible. To come straight on the table and make an enormous 100 break. Shows the quality. 86 and the fluency of Ronnie O'Sullivan. 87. Do you think Lee Spick will be learning anything from this, Mark? He's, not, he's hardly put a foot wrong in this frame. I think on a serious note, we'll be seeing how, how you can gain ultimate perfection at playing this game. I'm just trying to work out what he's going to be on. He's gone off the black three times. He's had a chance blue. of a one four three, I think. Yeah, blue and two pinks missing. That's right. Great queuing there off the rail. I wonder, if, I wonder if anybody's told Ronnie O'Sullivan he's not playing in the tournament. That's how it's got to be done, Paul. You've got to get that good. That's what his dad's saying to him. That was the vanquished Paul Hunter from the first quarter-final game. And here is uh, the triumphant Ronnie O'Sullivan playing the exhibition game against the quarter-final winner, Lee Spick, knocking in all the balls and first visit the table for a clearance of 143.
Well, Lee, what do you think of that? Well, I enjoyed that one shot. <laughs> Good, that was. You got down on, on, with, on the red with the rest, tried to roll it into keep position on the black, I knew it was going through your mind, and then Ronnie just went to the table. How'd you feel? Gutted. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly than that, you're, net through, you're through to the semi-finals. Ronnie, congratulations, great break. Uh, what do you think of Lee Spick in his match? Um, I was watching him upstairs on the television, and uh, his cue action and his, his eye for a, a long ball is just unbelievable. I mean, uh, he's a bit like Jimmy White, really, and uh, probably a bit like myself. I mean, very attacking and uh, just enjoys the game. You can see the way he walks around the table, he's got a, a buzz in it, and it's good that, um, that the young players are coming on the scene and people can watch them on the television because I enjoyed m watching that match more than probably some of the professionals watching them play. Thanks very much, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Lee Spick, and we'll see you again next week on New Kids on the Bays. Goodbye. <laughs>